after that FA Cup game at the weekend, it's two games without winning in two different competitions. But the way that FA Cup game panned out and the way you finished it, can you actually take some momentum from that into a trip to Crawley and going back to the league? It's awful negative, that, aren't it? I thought it was quite a positive question, actually. Well, I don't think it is. Two games without winning, it's not a lot, is it? Um, we've got to take the positives out of the way we played in the second half. Um, we've got to look at the bigger picture and the way we've adapted to our style of play to try and be a little bit more expansive, play a little bit more football, not be as reliant on going route one. That's something that we've concentrated on in training. And I think it's paying dividends in our play. It didn't pay dividends in the first half, so I'm not going to make any excuses for that. Uh, and sometimes you come up against a team who are uh, really ebullient and really on the front foot and playing well. Um, I think the last time we, we come across a team like that was Lincoln here last year. Lincoln came here last year and totally shocked us by how well they played. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just got to give them a little bit of a, a well done. In that, in that respect but we have we have tried to alter the way we play we wanted to be wanted to to try and keep possession a bit better try not to panic try and defend a bit better I think we, we're going in the right direction in that little step back mini step back on Saturday in the first half but uh, we've ended the game on a positive note so it's like being a golfer and you've you've had a bad back nine uh, you've had a bad front nine and then you come in with three birdies at the end and you you walk off the course loving golf and wanting to get right back at it and I think all lads are the same. As far as the way you're playing is concerned, the Colchester game here where you, you, you penned them in, you made loads of chances, the second half of that FA Cup game, is that closer to what you want week in, week out, albeit with more goals scored? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but if you play like that every week and you play to your very absolute max every week, you'll end up being in the Champions League, won't you? <laughs> you know it's just not going to happen. Although you'll try... And you should never get bored of trying. And you should never lose the will to try. Uh, the reality is some of the teams are going to have a say in what you do. That's the beauty of football. It's not a one-way thing. It's not a, It's not an aesthetically pleasing sport where you're getting marked like, you know, the Olympics, the gymnastics floor or whatever. You know, you, you, there's an opposition trying to plan all week to try to stop you. So, you know, there's hurdles that you'd have to overcome. And, you know, we've we've been good at, at being able to navigate that, but it's an, always an ongoing battle. Isn't it? You've got a busy period coming up with weekends and then midweeks. And how much do you look at the overall bigger picture workload for players? And how much is it a case of we've got a game in two days and X, Y, and Z are going to be fit and A, B, and C aren't? Yeah, I mean, over the years, that's been our sole responsibility, and we've got a good eye for it, really. You know, myself, Jimmy, and John, because we've been doing it that long, you can see when players need the rest, when they don't. But it'd be foolish if you've got the facility to to use the data that you've got, not to use it. So we're we're, we're lucky we've got Chris Scholes, who's been very very good at his job. He analyzes what the lads are doing, what the workloads are, what they need. He monitors them on a daily basis. He gives them extra to do on the on the days off. Um, and so that's working really well at the moment um, and it, it makes our job easier you know because we can put them in the hands of someone that we trust and we're getting the results that we need and we're getting the feedback that, that we need to to be able to plan our days a little bit more in advance than what we had done in the past and you know you're always trying to get better and you know we haven't got all the answers and you're always searching for the answers, but you're also searching to, to improve your own style of management, what you do. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I think has improved. We're still on the balance where, because we've had we had a little mini glut of injuries that we didn't like, nobody likes, but you're still a little bit protective of them. And sometimes, you know, you, you might feel as though they could be worked a little bit harder, a little bit longer. But, you know, uh, I think the proof of the pudding will be in what you get on a weekly basis. And as the games start to stack up, how many injuries you get, how, how what your stats are at the end of December compared to the end of September, um, what your running stats are, what your intensity is like. And, you know, we're lucky that we have that at hand. And we've got a, 
a willing set of lads who are predominantly young, but really, really enthusiastic. And I'm sure you're going to ask me about the, the Preston game the, during the week. And if anything summed it up, it was how, how well they played in that game and how hard they worked. Now, not necessarily a set of young lads, you know, Matt Lowe and Seamus played in that game. And we had lads who were knocking on the door for first team places. And some of the young lads who I would like to use, we felt as though they were the lads who hadn't been playing a lot needed. Uh, but their run stats were really high, really good in that game. And, you know, that's a testament to the the spirit that's slowly starting to develop at the club. Just as far as a return to league matters is concerned, I think you're three points from third and three points from tenth. <laughs> There's not too much between teams in that section of the table. Is it important to be in there in a playoff position at the moment? Does it matter psychologically or is it still way too early? I think it's always important to be as high as you can. Uh, our main focus is just getting three points. Keep trying to get three points and see where that takes you. My little uh, target that I always like to get past as quick as I can is 30 points. Um, and the sooner we get to that, the better for me. But there's a lot of games to be played um, and a lot of teams all think in the same way that they want to win games and climb tables. You know, we're, we're still smarting a little bit that we didn't we didn't get the awards or performance deserved against Colchester, but there's nothing you can do about it. What you can do is, is plan for the next game and try and avoid the pitfalls that you've had and and try and get better, and that's what we're always trying to do. Have we had enough games now for the table to reflect the fact that you've started pretty well? That you're playing pretty well? That's for other people to comment on, honestly. You know, yeah, no one likes a bragger, do they? Um, I, th I think uh, I've been pleased with the change that we've showed over the last four or five weeks. I wasn't, you know, we were winning a few games early on the season, and you know I wasn't happy. You know, I wasn't happy with the first win that we had against Newport. I wasn't happy with the, the win against Sutton. Uh, and I'll never be one who gets blinded by just the scoreline. I'm, I'm very much a student in how we're playing. And I'll, I, I know, because I've been doing it for that long, I know when we're going in the right direction and when we're not. Um, and when we need to address things. Um, and sometimes that gets taken out of your hand because, you know, you, you, haven't, you simply haven't got the players to put into to adapt to the way you want to want to play or the money, or you want to change things or you, you have injuries or you have suspensions. Um, but I think we've still got to focus on what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve playing-wise. Um, and then when you get more of your senior players involved, the likes of your Seamus's and your, your Sean's and your Joe Pritchard's and your Kelvin's, they they tend to have an influence on, on the other players and, and keep them... Keep them focused on the job. Uh, I think Joe Pritchard's been really, really good this this season in the impact he's had on the team. The way he's conducted himself, both as a player and a person. Uh, started off brilliantly when he came back. Had a little bit of a, a lull, which is only to be expected. And he's come back strong again now. Uh, deservedly nominated for Player of the Month, uh, as a few of our players could have been. Uh, and we've got really, really healthy competition for places now. You know what I mean? Jack Nolan likes to play up when he when he's on song. We need him on song really all the time he plays. And he's found it difficult to break into the side. So, you know, um, Ben Woods and Dan Martin really putting in accomplished performances for players so young. And Sean Wally Blind is is eighty two years of age. So. When you when you when you have uh, when you have players who are comfortable in the way they're playing, and then they try and rub that off on each other, you generally get you get a better feeling and you get a better impact. And we're getting that at the moment. That's not to say that's going to last. You've always got to keep working at it. You've got to keep applying yourselves. We've got to keep applying ourselves. And sometimes, you know, you can you can be guilty of being blase about it. You think know, of taking your eye off the ball, and I'd be lying if I, if, I, if reflecting on what. I've gone on in my career that there has been a couple of times when I have. Maybe, maybe it took me eye off it. Maybe, 
maybe taking things for granted. And so you get back on the horse and you keep working hard, keep concentrating, keep focused. You can't guarantee you're going to get what you want. You know, I've, I've had this for the, ever since I was a kid, you know, I read autobiographies about oh, whatever you want, if you put your mind to it strong enough, you'll get it. Please believe me, you don't. It doesn't always happen. You need a load of luck. There's no one who wants to be a professional footballer more than me. I can guarantee that. And I was never a professional footballer. As some of our players remind me when they scored a the first league goal. Uh, but you can try and be as best as you can. You can try and be the best version of yourself. And I think we're all striving to do that. And I think you've got to do that every day. And, and try and be better. Try and be a better person. Try and be a better footballer. Try and be a better football manager. Try and be a better coach. Try and be a, a better communicator. And we're always striving to do that. Just on Crawley, it's about a year since you went there in the FA Cup. You're now going back in the league game. What's changed for them? How are they different? How are they the same? I know Scott. Um, and I know the way he wants to play. Uh, and... I've watched them three or four times this season playing against teams who we've who we're due to play and they're very impressive when they get it right, they're very, very impressive. Uh, and I think they'll be they'll be better equipped than what they were last season. Uh, and the the downside for me is I don't get to ask Sean my normal question. Sean Morley, have you ever scored at Crawley? Because I know the answer. I and are there there's more than one example of this in the division. Are they an example of they might get talked about for stuff that happens in the boardroom and off the pitch and the people who own the club and all those things, perhaps more than the football that they produce? And is that a bit of a problem with the way we cover football, people in my industry? Possibly. Uh, but everyone's wanting the, the story underneath the story, aren't they? Um, and that's why you've, you know, you've, you know, media gets born from that, doesn't it? You know, one of the. You know, I don't want to advertise other other publications here, but one of the one of the, the ones that's come to the forefront at the moment is the Athletic, and you know they you don't see a lot of stories on the Athletic about actually football matches. It's only the the back stories or the under stories or stories in the future or what's going to happen. And, and sometimes people are more more interested in the juicy gossip uh, and trying to get a, an insight in what isn't common knowledge tends to float people's boats um, you know and unfortunately within well fortunately or unfortunately within an area of social media where you know people people can communicate very very quickly with wider audiences uh, and can have a massive impact and just lastly what's the personnel situation I think you're Tommy Leeless aren't you Tommy is suspended um and that's about it. Seamus played 90 minutes, which was brilliant for us on Tuesday. Uh, and so, the, just the long-termers are still, you know, nursing their way back. 